the term cartel is no longer reserved for Hollywood movies. With ransomware now being a billion dollar industry and prolific attacks forcing whole countries into a state of emergency, it's about time we discuss the growing threat of ransomware gangs or ransomware cartels, if you will. Cyber News Explained. A quick welcome to our channel and a little side note, I need your help to reach that 60,000 community. It'd mean a lot if you could slam that subscribe button right now. Okay, to briefly explain ransomware, it's one of the most damaging types of malware. If you get targeted with a ransomware attack, it often means the loss of irreplaceable files and even spending weeks recovering access to computers. But with large entities, governments, and even countries being targeted, it has gotten a lot more concerning. Cyber criminals use various attack vectors, old and new. Surprisingly, an IBM report showed that four of the top five vulnerability exploitation methods used in 2021 were in fact brand new. Yet how does a ransomware attack actually happen? Speaking hypothetically, you receive an invoice in a Microsoft Word document. You're rushing to get ready, and without a thought, you click it. Here's the problem. You've unwittingly installed a common ransomware type. Slowly, the ransomware scrambles your files one by one. A dreaded display message or text file is now presented on your background server or PC stating a tough ultimatum. Pay and have your files retrieved or lose your files forever. Now that's just one type of ransomware, usually spread via phishing campaigns or targeting devices. The bottom line, it would take some of your involvement for this ransomware to infect your device, the malicious Microsoft Office files or PDFs as an example here. Then there's non-interactive ransomware. The notorious WannaCry virus is a commonly used example of standalone malware. It is a worm that infected a huge number of computers and servers back in 2017. This type took no involvement from the victims, yet the outcome was similar. It still encrypted files and demanded a ransom for the decryption key. Now, you may be surprised to hear that ransomware 2022 numbers are growing. Ransomware actually more than doubled in 2021 alone. It is clearly a profitable business for cyber criminals, and that leads us to the complexity of ransomware gangs and how they've created a whole business model with HR departments and everything. The advancement of ransomware is truly staggering from Ace Trojan to a complete business model. With ransomware cartel gangs now offering ransomware as a service and working with affiliates to widen their workforce to target organizations of all sizes. To name some of the godfathers of the cyber world, the Maze Gang, Lockbit, Ragnar Locker, Conti, and Suncrypt. In late 2019, the Maze Cartel attacked the University of Utah, which led to the university being forced to pay 457k ransom. Despite the fact they had restored their data from backups, Maze was still threatening to leak exfiltrated personal student information. This kind of claim isn't without threat. Some ransomware operators tend to advertise exfiltrated data from a company on the dark web, especially if they haven't received their payment within a specific window. Now, whilst only a glimpse into the catastrophic damage that ransomware gangs cause, it's worth noting the most aggressive gangs having anywhere up from 670 victims on their list and still growing. To talk a little bit about their operation, ransomware gangs are now trying to answer their labor scarcity by hiring new members. A few years ago, they would just blatantly put ads on hacker forums looking for affiliates. Today, this isn't as common due to the focus on ransomware by legal entities. It can end up being a who you know hiring situation. Touching on the hierarchy of such nefarious groups, it usually involves two major parties. The ransomware operators who develop the malware and the affiliates. These can consist of any number of people and usually a very lucrative share of earnings is put on the table. In an example where our InfoSec researcher responded to a ransomware gang advertisement on a hacker forum, ransomware operatives were looking to take a mere 20 to 30% for themselves and offering 70% of earnings to the affiliates. To put it into perspective, the group's biggest payout was supposedly a whopping 18 million, so we're talking big figures here. 
If you're curious about the reasoning behind the so-called pay gap, an affiliate would actually do the most of the hard work. Initial compromises hacking the company and lateral movement. Affiliates work the network. Choosing victims by buying access from access brokers, scanning for vulnerabilities, or just simply using social engineering or phishing to gain an initial foothold. Basically, it takes a lot of legwork with affiliates doing reconnaissance on companies looking where they could do the most damage, reputational or otherwise. And they tend to strike when they have a better chance of going unnoticed. After the network has been compromised and data exfiltrated, the ransomware operators will provide the locker and the service to extort the money. And that's a whole other kettle of fish. Bitcoin tends to be a common form of payment, and they legitimize this in many different ways, often through third parties. You see, the UK, EU, and places like that have strict KYC checks and anti-money laundering policies. If the crypto is not registered in those places, it may bypass these checks and it is much harder for law enforcement to work out where the money landed. That leads me to my next question. Where is the law enforcement in all this? Well, an IBM report found that ransomware gangs have a lifespan of about 17 months. Despite the growing efforts of law enforcement, ransomware gangs seem to easily relaunch and rename themselves to evade pressure. Just this year alone, Conti, one of the most nefarious gangs, was proclaimed dead and then CIOP was brought back to life. That's where they've made a true anchor in the ransomware market. Particular gangs may not last, but business models do. With newcomers already joining the market and making quite the footing, Black Vasta is an alarming example managing to attack at least 26 victims within their first month. Business models aside, there are still changes within the ransomware landscape, especially before and during the Ukrainian war. A significant change was members of the Russia-tied ransomware gang Ransomware Evil being arrested by Russia's domestic intelligence service themselves. It would seem this is the first time Russia took public legal action against such groups and one of the most prolific takedowns to date. The message is clear. No cyber criminal is bulletproof. Furthermore, the pro-Russia ransomware group Conti, notorious for attacks against more than a thousand organizations in the US and other countries, has themselves been targeted by data leaks. A pro-Ukrainian insider known as Conti Leaks on Twitter has a clear agenda, posting sensitive data from internal chats, trick bot sources, and even unmasking some members. This demonstrates a shift in the market, no doubt. So, ransomware and the ransomware market is a complex cyber threat. With new gangs emerging from the woodwork and the profit margin ever growing, it is clear that ransomware attacks are here to stay. Yet, with law enforcement's involvement and new sanctions being placed, the way ransomware gangs operate might not always be as successful as it previously was. What are your thoughts on ransomware? Are you doing anything to protect your personal devices? Thanks for watching and subscribe to get regular explainer videos just like this one.